All right, hello, my Challenge A parents. Uh, this is Carrie, of course, source of all hacky videos that come to you for Challenge. Um, so I wanted to give you an overview of how I'm starting our composition notebook for science fair. Um, writing in the science fair composition, sci uh, bleh, writing in the lab journal can uh, feel overwhelming and scary and what if I get it wrong? And so I'm writing one up to show the kids each week. And I wanted you to be able to see what I'm showing them in class since you can't be there. It's actually not scary. Um, but I just want to give you give you a show. So um, this, this is a lame Dollar Tree one because I forgot to pick myself up uh, a decent five-star one when I was picking them up on sale. The kids all have a nice mead. Uh, composition notebook with lovely white crisp thick pages this Dollar Tree one is basically on newsprint and it's so thin that I decided to only write on one side of the paper which your students can do also anyway I actually like all my notebooks that way but all of your students will come home with a composition notebook and in the cover I have already glued the project schedule and we will go through and add the dates in class together so that they have that date those dates um, this is just a copy of what you both already have in your guide so I, I shrunk it a little so that it would fit on the in the cover here and then I just glued it in with glue stick so if it peels out later because this is a synthetic plastic cover so it might it might pull out just glue it back again um, and we will fill out some of this together in class, the students and I, I will get them going with it, but I wanted you to see what it is I'm showing them that I did and how you can get yours started. Um, and also how this also, this week, we're also starting our uh, research plan, which is the typed document that includes sort of the finalized notes. And I wanna show you how to get that started as well. So here's the composition notebook that is my lame one. And here is my science fair schedule with my crossed out, crossed out dates and things in it. And together in class, we will put in everyone's name, phone number, and email, and our community because that's the required cover stuff. We will also pre-number, I don't know, 10 or 12 pages. We won't do the whole book. There's no need to. Um, on the next page, we have the table of contents. This is before I decided to only use one page of the paper, one side of the paper. Um, and we're probably only going to write science fair schedule on the cover, personal information, page one, table of contents, page two, and that's all we will have in class. The rest of this is what I did just now, which I will show you and I will show the kids to do at home this week. Um, so this will, these pages might be slightly different because I might just tell the kids it's a good idea to only write on one side and we'll see, but it doesn't really matter. That's just because I don't like when my pen bleeds through from one side to the other, it makes it hard to read. So you can do whatever you like. So then for the table of contents, we're gonna skip, um, I, sp I skipped two two-page spreads. So I've got these two pages for table of contents and also these two, and you just leave these blank at the front and if you don't fill them all up, it doesn't matter. Um, the big idea behind the notebook is that it contains notes it is a product that the judges look at, but it is not so they can see a finalized product. It is so that they can see your research and your thoughts and your methods and your mistakes and what you learned from them. So it doesn't matter if, oh no, there's an extra blank page. If it was, if you were setting it up from the beginning to be a finalized product, you would know how many pages you needed, but that's not what we're doing here. So more table of contents. And then here we go. Um, I started out writing on this side and then realized there was going to be too much bleed through. Remember that you don't, you don't ever black anything out completely. You just put a single strike through and move on. You will see so many problems that I had and so many mistakes that I made in my writing. This is a great example of how to make a mistake and keep going. Um, every single entry is always, always dated always and forever. Um, I chose to put my dates over here so that it will be easy later to skim down and see new dates as they come. Okay, so I literally started this out um, like a journal. Uh, I'm starting research on biscuits. And then I realized, wait, no, that's not right. I'm researching cornbread. So I literally made a strikeout and wrote it above. Um, so my project that I'm using as a sample project for the kids is cornbread muffins and how the different amounts of baking powder affects the rise. 
that simple. It's definitely within my wheelhouse. And as the director, I won't have to do too much extra uh, research to be able to give the kids something good to look at every week. Um, so also, my stuff will be a little bit more simplistic, possibly than yours, although you really shouldn't be doing anything much more complicated. So this is page seven. And I'm starting my background research. So I came here to my table of contents and I put background research, page seven. And I literally just started writing. Betty Crocker has two recipes for cornbread. And, and then I hit a snag. I had planned on testing basic cornbread recipe with differing amounts of baking powder, but the recipes all have different amounts of cornmeal to flour. Can I still test cornbread? So I had a problem, and instead of thinking of it on the side before I wrote anything and making sure it was all going to be perfect, I went ahead and wrote in my problem. Then I went away and thought about it, and I came back. I think I can still test cornbread, because my basic recipe will be the same for every batch with the baking... Oh, I accidentally wrote baking soda, so I struck it out and wrote baking powder. It's going to be my only variable. So for my background research, I decided it doesn't matter if I'm only looking at cornbread or if they all have different amounts of cornbread plus flour or if I'm looking at muffins. I decided for my background research it was still going to apply. So I literally just wrote all that in here so that the judges, when they come to look at my board, can see that I had that thought and I solved that problem and I moved on. Okay, so since I am using a hard book to do research and I need I need to have certain information, I started copying that in. So what I'm doing for my cornbread recipe is that I'm looking at my cookbook and I'm writing down where my uh, recipe is and then I'm finding how much dry how many dry ingredients, in this case cornmeal, flour, and sugar, and then I need to know how much baking powder there was and then I converted that to a ratio. That's what I need for my project. Of course, your student will need something else, but you can see that whatever background research information I needed, I literally copied in here. Now, I use my Betty Crocker cookbook, so that means we need a bibliography. You will have a bibliography over in your research plan, but you still write in here the resources that you use sort of as you use them. That ensures that you don't accidentally leave any out. So I went to the very last page, and this, my bibliography, I'm going to work backwards. So I used the very last page and wrote bibliography, and I wrote in my source information. I have to go look this up more. There's not a table of contents page, or not a contents. There's not a uh, publisher's page in my cookbook. So I'm going to have to do some internet research for my particular cookbook and find out when my cookbook was published. I didn't expect to run into that, but that's going to be here, and I will leave some spaces to put notes about that. But I'm just going to start it backwards. So if by some chance I fill up this entire bibliography sheet and I need another page, I'll just flip one more page and I will have another one here. And at the very, very, very end, I will add whatever page number this comes up to. I will add that to my table of contents later, right? So long as you have the uh, bibliography pages in there, you can always just, you can add them here later after the whole thing is done. Whatever's last, you'll just put your bibliography pages in. Okay, so um, I decided I wanted to look at six different recipes to get their averages. So here was this recipe of my ratio. Here are two more. Um, this layout seemed good to me. So this is where parents, you might need to help your kids come up with some general neatness and general notebook layout. You know, I put a bullet point and I underlined my title. Then I did my math. I left a nice space. Oh, I made a mistake there. Then I left another space. Then I started a new thing with a bullet and an underlining. If you don't have a kid who is already pretty organized in their thinking, you might need to help them What's a good way to write this? No, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be readable both for yourself and for the judges. So just you might need to help them with laying out their stuff. So I went through my cookbook and I looked at all these things. There's more recipes that I looked at. I didn't make these, obviously. I just took them out of the cookbook. Okay, now I have a page that has my totals. So I wrote down all my information and then I'm summarizing it all here in a little, it's not even really a chart, it's more of a list. And then for mine, I needed the smallest amount, the largest amount, the difference. I called it range, then I decided it was difference, and then I remembered that the range was the difference between, and the range would have been fine. But hey, I didn't black it out. There it is. And then I wrote my average. So this consolidated chart 
is going to be important for the judges to be able to find. They don't necessarily, they can glance through my recipes, but the recipes themselves don't really help them know my project. This recipe samples totals does help them understand where I got some of my data for my project. So recipe samples totals on page 13, I flipped back and I added that recipe sample totals, page 13. And then I also, I'll show you in a second, I wrote a research conclusion. I don't know if that was a great title for that, but hey, there it is, Reci research conclusion. I'm not a full on scientist and I don't have exact knowledge about how to write these things up, but I wrote it in so they could find, I drew some conclusions from my research on page 13. So, my research conclusion is most baked goods which use baking powder to rise use approximately one teaspoon of baking powder to every cup of dry ingredients. So this information is going to give me a place to start for my own personal experiment. So all of this that I just did, all of this chart and these recipes, this was all part of my background research, which started on whatever page I said it started on. Okay, so the judges, as they're looking through my project, can come down and say, oh, background research started on page seven. Then by the time she got to 13, there were some totals, might wanna look at that, and a conclusion that she drew from this research. So this is all together, and it's not, it's organized, but it's not in any way, shape, or form perfect. It's simply a list of the information I got. I hope that's clear. Um, there's lots of strikeouts, there's lots of, that's a, a light scribble but it's not blacked out. I miss, I made a dividing sign instead of a ratio colon there. And so I just moved it out and moved it over. And that's just the way it is. My handwriting is not super amazing. It's probably better than a seventh graders, but not that much. Um, so I did all of this first and then, and this here, we're going to be really hacky because I'm going to hold up my laptop Nope, I'm going to bring down my phone and show you the research plan that I made. So here comes the hacky. Uh, I will send this to you. Actually, I'm going to send it home with the students. So here is my preliminary research plan. It's just a document. Obviously, I have my bit up here that you won't have. Title goes here. I haven't made a title, so I make a title holder. There's my name. Um, I suggest putting in all of your... Um, Roman numeral title things that are required parts just all at once because it's difficult later after you've done number four to go back in and add another one and have it start at number five for you. If you just put them all in together, then you'll be able to just make a space and write in whatever you need to write in and these will keep their numbers. So I suggest that you just, you're going to go up to your bullets bullets and numbers, whatever your program has. This is LibreOffice, but it's really similar to Microsoft and everybody else. Um, you're going to go down to there. You're going to tell it that you want to use Roman numerals, and then you're just going to add in all your titles. And these are all in your guide, and it's all on the research plan that's a sample. And yeah, it's on the research plan sample that's in your um, science fair guide. So all of this is in there. And then I literally just sort of made reasonable sentences. The research problem where you describe your problem isn't assigned this week. So I literally wrote, I'm going to describe it later. And then there's my question. How much, how does the amount of baking powder used in muffins affect their rise height? And then I summarized my research. I looked at six recipes. They all used baking powder. Um, I looked at two cornbread, one biscuits and three muffins. On average, here it is. The lowest ratio is this and the highest ratio is this. So this research is all over in my science fair notebook. I don't have to rewrite everything here. This is literally like a conclusion. It's like the conclusion that I wrote so that they can see um, at a quick glance what I came to. And if they have a question how I got to that information, they can go and look in my lab journal. I hope that makes sense. So this is just a few sentences that gives the conclusion to my background research and how that helped me. Then I was able to write a hypothesis. Less baking powder will yield shorter, more dense goods. More baking powder will yield taller baked goods. At some point, the higher ratio will negatively affect the flavor or texture. So I hope to overrise some of them. We'll see. That's part of my hypothesis. And the rest of this isn't designed yet. So it's literally just sitting there. So um, I hope that this can sh this shows you how to get it started and to just leave yourself space to put more sentences in 
later here and there and everywhere. Of course, these do not have to be finalized yet. They don't need to be proofread and dressed up and all of that stuff. This is just get something on the page and then the kids are going to bring a printout of their entire research plan every week. So right now it's only going to be one page because it's only going to have this on it. And then next week, I think they have to add um, maybe the materials list. I'm not sure why the materials list is after procedure. Um, that is the order that it's in in the guide. I don't know that it matters. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. Anyway, at some point there'll be a materials list. At some point there will be a procedure and every week one of those is due and you just add it and then print the whole thing and bring it and we can discuss it. So that's the research plan. This is the lab journal, and I hope that you are able to successfully uh, get your lab journal started this week. Have a great week. Bye.